At this site once stood Pilgrim Congregational Church and the parsonage which was the boyhood home of Robert Sinsack Abbott. In 1878, he came to Woodville at age 10 and spent the formative years of his life here under the guidance of his stepfather, Reverend John H. H. Sinsack. Neighbors recall seeing Reverend Sinsack walking down the road carrying young Robert on his shoulders. It is a telling image of their very special relationship. At this site, Robert grew spiritually, attending church services regularly and through family Bible uh, evening study. Reverend Sensack showed the young man the power of the written word by publishing his own newspapers, the Gospel Trumpet and the Woodville Times. Newspaper articles on racial bigotry were often the topic of prayer meetings at Pilgrim Congregational Church. These experiences and the example of his stepfather gave Robert Abbott the determination to work against the inequities of the Jim Crow South and gave him the knowledge to combat racial prejudice. Robert Abbott remembered the critical turning point in his life this way. Before I started on my life's work, journalism, I was counseled by my beloved father that a good newspaper was one of the strongest weapons ever to be used in defense of a race which was deprived of its citizenship rights. He founded the Chicago Defender as a one-man operation in 1905. He wrote the articles and sold the papers for two cents each, going door to door in Southside Chicago. The Defender's attacks on lynchings, assaults, and racial injustice, as well as its focus on African American achievement won the newspaper a national audience. Even where the newspaper was banned by southern authorities, it was smuggled south by railroad porters, passed from person to person, and read aloud in barber shops and neighborhood halls. First Bryan Baptist Church in Savannah sold 25 to 50 copies of the paper each Sunday, but there were never enough to go around. By 1920, the newspaper lived up to its masthead as the world's greatest weekly, serving as a national voice advocating equal justice before the law, equality in education in the workplace, and the extension of voting rights. In World War I, Abbott called for a great migration of Southern blacks to the North for better wages and a better life. Labor-hungry factories in the North needed more workers to meet the demand brought on by war, and Abbott took every opportunity to encourage his Southern readers. The promised land up North was only a train ride away and Abbott supplied both train schedules and want ads in his paper. By 1917, it was estimated that 100 black workers were leaving Savannah every week. When peace returned in 1919, approximately 1.3 million blacks had re relocated to Detroit, Philadelphia, Gary, Indiana, Akron, Ohio, New York City, and of course, Chicago, in part because of the critical role played by Robert Abbott and the Defender. When Robert Abbott died in 1940, he was eulogized as the most influential African American in the United States. The 11 years he lived in Woodville shape the man that we honor today. There are those here this morning who met him 
who knew him personally. All of us, however, remember his courage, his perseverance, and his vision, and work to fulfill his dream of a just society.